It's one of those things. So the Ironclad is the first class that you get in Slay the Spire. He is the like simplest class, sort of, in terms of the ways that his cards work together. Um, the ways that his strategies evolve. But he's got a lot of depth to him, and there are a lot of different directions you can take him. Ironclad is a class where the ways that your cards interact matter quite a bit more than the ways that your relics interact with what's going on, in my experience. So I don't find that relics are quite as important on Ironclad as they are on Silent. And usually which relics I have on Ironclad aren't going to affect that much how I build my deck. Ironclad has a bunch of different ways to um, work out how to block incoming damage or can even just ignore incoming damage in some situations. He's got lots of different ways to deal front-loaded damage and he's got pretty much only one clear way to scale up as fights go on, which is strength scaling, although there are some niche other things like scaling up rampage or exhausting down to an infinite combo or something like that, which you can do. Which are uh, pretty cool. Try and take a ruler and go to the beach, then look at the sea and put the ruler in front of you so it matches the horizon and you will see the world curve. Um, I went up with a glider once. You can just see that the world is curved. It's like super obvious. <laughs> if you're up in the sky, I don't know. Alright. So Ironclad starts out with a deck that's very offense heavy. We can block about 10 damage per turn. And that's like without considering that there's variability in that. It's very easy for us to have turns where we can't block any damage with this deck. Hey Quark Captain. Uh -huh. Agbomo show to you as well. Thanks very much for the Twitch Bram sub. Much appreciated. Because Ironclad is so attack heavy and has so little block, um, often for most of Act 1, you're using your health and your relic, starting relic, which heals you 6 HP at the end of each combat. And you're sort of trading your health to get through floors and get more rewards as you start to build toward a deck which is able to block and stuff. And even later in the game, often Ironclad decks spend the first few turns of a fight taking some damage before they get things under control. I think that's very common for Ironclad decks. Ironclad just isn't quite, doesn't have quite as accessible good block as other classes do. On the other hand, you've got a lot of very strong attacks. You have Bash, which creates vulnerable on enemies, which increases your damage from other attacks by 50%. So you have a clear reason, a clear card-based reason to continue adding damage to your deck, which is based on these attacks dealing damage. If you're on Silent, you can think about damage from Noxious Fumes or damage from a Thousand Cuts or Caltrops or something. But on Ironclad, because Bash starts in your deck straight away, you already have a card which is making damage from attack steal 50% more. And that means that Ironclad cares a lot more about just getting damage from attacks into his deck at the start of the game. Because of that, a card like Combust, which deals 5 damage AoE as a power every turn, um, would be better on Silent probably than on Ironclad. Silent's missing that vulnerable. Looking at our um, choices from the whale here, Ironclad has quite good rare cards. Uh, there are many good Ironclad rare cards which are excellent on the first floor. Feed, Reaper are two of them. Immolate's incredible. Bludgeon's very good. Offering, of course, is ins like there are so many good Ironclad rares. Um, you, you could argue for taking this probably. Typically, I will just take max HP on most classes at this point in my Slay the Spire experience. I've gotten to a point where I feel very confident making decisions throughout the run that will win the run for me. And I've really grown to value the max HP a lot. I feel very confident finding places to trade current health that I have for benefits otherwise. Like, for example, if you have 
30 HP instead of 23 HP, maybe all of a sudden you're able to safely take one more elite fight. And the fact that you're at 30 HP means that you're never going to die. At 23 HP, maybe sometimes you died, maybe like 20% of the time you'd die and the rest of the time you'd be fine. But having that extra HP is making me considerably safer and able to take paths through the Spire that I think are good. So I think max HP is very good for me. Um, I like max HP a lot. I've grown to like max HP more and more and more as I've played more and more of this game. Transforming a card's okay, choosing a rare card's okay. You generally don't want to obtain a random boss relic with Ironclad because your starting relic is so central to the way that you're coping with the first act. You're going to need sustain um, because your deck just doesn't block well enough. Okay, looking at pathing, we're going to end up fighting the Guardian, who is the easiest Act 1 boss. It's possible for Ironclad to die to Guardian. The way that Ironclad would die to Guardian is if Ironclad had continued to fail to find any block cards. Guardian is a, a boss who gets a lot easier if you just have a few good block cards in your deck. So, yeah, that's a thing. We don't care that much. Um... We expect to be able to beat Guardian without too much trouble, basically. Looking at the pathing at the start of the act, one of the really distinct things that happens in Act 1, and this is true in Act 2 and Act 3 as well, with slightly different parameters, there's a list of easy encounters, and or do you draw encounters from that for the first three hallway fights you get, and then there's a list of like all the encounters for the rest of the hallway fights. So your first three hallway fights are easy in Act 1, and the same is in, true in Act 2, and in Act 3, your first two hallway fights are easy. Um, and that's very noticeable in Act 1. If you take four hallway fights early, like one, two, three, four, this fourth hallway fight is often like four gremlins or five slimes, or a, a very difficult fight compared to what you've been fighting for the first three. So usually, I don't want to take my fourth hallway fight until my deck is quite strong. However, I do want to get my deck stronger, and in order to do that, I generally want to find a way to beat an elite early, get a relic. Elites have higher chances of rare cards, stuff like that. And in order to get my deck to a point where I have to, like, can beat an elite, I want to be able to pick up potions and I want to be able to pick up better cards. And that's something that happens from hallway fights. So generally, I'm trying to get exactly three hallway fights, no more, no less, um, before I fight an elite. Getting a campfire before the elites a very big deal. The best upgrade for Ironclad right now is by far Bash. Getting another entire turn of Vulnerables is going to deal you. You get two more damage from the Bash itself. And then the extra turn of Vulnerables, like another nine damage or something um, pretty regularly. So you're looking at like a 10 damage upgrade, which is just a premium, premium, premium upgrade. So yeah, we probably want to take this path. Three hallway fights, two events, campfire elite. Gets us another campfire, and uh, we have a pretty easy end to the act. We could also go for three fights, a store, a question mark. The, it does count fights from event nodes, Space Cowboy, which are semi-unlikely, but they happen. So you have to, yeah, you have to adapt accordingly if you're into those. We could get more elites. We could go this way. We get a store early, so we can buy a potion for this elite fight. We won't have an upgrade for it, obviously. Campfire, maybe a rest. Elite, another store. Campfire for an upgrade, perhaps. Elite, and the boss. I think that act ends up getting us a better deck on average than this act does. Um, this one here. This act is a lot safer. We do get good upgrades. We have like the same number of campfires, but none of the elites, or far fewer elites. Actually, we have one more campfire. I'm just going to go for the safe act. The fact that I got one more campfire ultimately made the decision for me. I think Ironclad has very good upgrades early too. There are a good number of Ironclad cards which just go from like okay to incredibly good off an upgrade. Bash is one of them. True Grit is another one of them. Um, Clothesline and Uppercut are both cards like that. I don't know. There are, there are a lot of them. Whirlwind's another one. So 
we have an uppercut carnage or war cry here war cry is a uh, like beginner mistake is to think that this card digs you deeper in your deck but it costs one card to draw this card you have to use a card draw to get this card into your hand so the fact that it draws one card for you just means that you're breaking even so all this card really does is let you put a card on top of your draw pile and exhaust. So there are some exhaust synergies that Ironclad can end up with, at which point Warcry can start to be a pretty good card. Ironclad typically doesn't care that much about putting a card on top for next turn. Ironclad's just it's not finicky like that. Most Ironclad decks don't have much reason to care about it. Um, but yeah, at the moment Warcry is not great. Warcry plus draws two cards, so that actually does deep, dig you deeper. And generally you want a Warcry plus. Carnage is great damage. Uh, upgrades to 28 damage. 20 damage for two energy is a pretty decent price. Compare it to Dash for Silent, which deals 10 damage and 10 block for two energy. It's the same output-ish, but block is a lot more valuable than damage at this point in the game. Uppercut's just incredible. Getting weak in your deck, weak weak does so much. Especially in boss fights, bosses are attacking you for uh, an immense amount, and weak's going to like reduce it by 10 or something a lot of the time. Uh, the vulnerable is very good as well. This is just a, a premium card. It's a very, very, very good upgrade as well. So we're going to probably try to upgrade Uppercut instead of Bash at this point. Upper gets really good for like all the elite fights in Act 1 2, like a Vulin Gremlin Knob. It's even pretty good against the Tri Sentries because it gets rid of their artifact and vulnerables them. Okay. Fight 2 is done. We're looking at cards again. We got an Anger, Perfected Strike, and a Rage. Um, so I've talked all about how Ironclad plays a lot of attacks and can't block very well, and it might follow sort of naturally that Rage would be a good card. Whenever you play an attack this turn, you gain three block. The issue with Rage is that it, like, you almost never end up in a place where Rage is good. The clear, easiest scaling to have on uh, Ironclad is Strength Scaling. And if you're scaling Strength, you don't want to play attacks at the start of the combat, really because you're gaining strength. So an attack played on turn 1 might deal 6, and an attack played on turn 10 might deal 60. So you'd much rather be playing your attacks on turn 10 than on turn 1. So typically you try to build a deck which cares about strength scaling to be mostly playing block cards, and rage is just very awkward. You're, you're not trying to facilitate playing a bunch of attacks on turn like 1, 2, and 3, and so rage doesn't typically work very well with where you want your deck to be in like the latter half of the run. It can work, but it's it's very awkward. Perfected Strike's just good early game damage. Uh, this deals 16 for 2 right now, so it's worse than Carnage, but it's it's okay. It's okay. You pretty much never want to take Perfected Strike and then actually try to take all the cards with Strike written on them, because all the cards with Strike are just not that good. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's, it just doesn't really work very well. You just draw a bunch of cards with strike written on them and then your deck dies because you can't block typically. Anger is a card that I used to take when it dealt 4 damage and then they buffed it because people weren't taking it very often and now it deals 5 damage and it's like even better than it used to be. Ironclad has the highest um, energy cost starter deck but only starts with three energies, just like the other classes. So on Silent, you have a Neutralized, which costs zero. Um, on Defect, you have only cards which cost one, and then your early game upgrades are usually making some of the cards cost zero. Meanwhile, on Ironclad, you have a Bash, which is a card you really want to play that costs two. We've already added an Uppercut, too. A lot of Ironclad's early game cards, which he cares about adding to the deck, cost a lot of energy. And so Anger is actually really nice. Uh, you almost always draw anger and are looking at a hand where if you hadn't drawn anger you would have just not used the card that you drew in its place for anything at all keep in mind also that ironclad's not trying that hard to block in act one uh we've already said we're like trading hp for for clearing floors and we're planning to sustain with burning blood so it doesn't matter that much if we draw anger instead of a defend it's like 
you know, if you really wanted to defend and then we drew anger in its place, that would be the downside of taking anger here, but it's an acceptable risk. So we'll take an anger. We can't think about going for the elite path now. We've got in some pretty strong cards off the first two floors. I think I'm going to. This is a nice thing about taking this path. We we know about these two paths available, and if we get a situation where our deck's already pretty strong on the second floor, we can go for the tougher path. You take Limit Break with Demon Form, do you need to scale that fast? Um, typically, it's nice to have both, I think. I'll take the 5 max HP. We could actually receive the Relic, put a Regret in our deck, and then just go to the store, immediately remove the Regret. I think that 5 max HP is really good, though. I'm like, that's, that's really good, in my opinion. Would Anger be better or worse if its copies exhausted? It would be better because Ironclad benefits immensely from anything saying exhaust on it, basically. About a third of Ironclad's cards say exhaust on them, and um, there are cards like Feel No Pain or um, Dark Embrace, which do like very, very, very strong things with cards exhausting. We're going to take Spot Weakness here. Act 2 boss is the place where a lot of runs die, and typically Act 2 boss is the first time in a run where it's absolutely inexcusable not to have any scaling. Excuse me. So it's really hard. Once you've gotten to a point where you're winning like most of your runs, the vast majority of your runs at Ascension 15, it's really hard to pass up your first source of scaling. Because right now, as I sit in this run, I'm thinking like, okay, it's like every now and then I'll die in Act 1 by being a little bit too greedy. That happens maybe one time in 20 or something. I'll die in Act 1. I don't expect to die to this Act 1 boss. I'll die in Act 2 to Holy Fights and Elites a decent amount of the time. Probably I expect to die to them about one time in 10. And then I'm probably going to die to the Act 2 boss currently before I take Spot Weakness, maybe one time in 20, just because I never find a scaling source for it. And so this Spot Weakness like solves a quarter of the deaths that I'm worried about, just buying it. And then I just have like the other stuff to worry about. It's, it's immense how big a problem the Act 2 boss is and working out how to scale. And yeah, Spot Weakness just solves that. Did Mind Blast get nerfed? Yeah, it did. I think because of uh, Endless Mode. If I had more gold, would I consider Reaper there? I definitely would have considered it. Although I think I would have taken Spot Weakness over it. Alright, so we have a Smoke Bomb now, as well as an Attack Potion, which means that we're better at killing Elites thanks to the Attack Potion. Also, if an Elite fight's going badly, we can just get out of there. So much less, much less concern about dying in Act 1 at the moment. Now I've talked quite a bit about how we don't have great block cards at the start of the game. Ghostly Armor is one of the... It's one of the weaker Ironclad block cards. It actually has a bigger number on it than Shrug It Off or True Grit do, but I think Shrug It Off and True Grit are both considerably better cards. So we're going to take that. We already talked about Warcry. Corruption's worth talking about. Corruption is an immensely, immensely, immensely powerful card. The The baseline thing that Corruption does is it makes it so if you're drawing more cards than you can play every turn, you don't really have to worry about that anymore. So if you have a deck with a couple of Pommel Strikes and a Battle Trance, you're probably ending the turn with a lot of cards in hand. Corruption can generate enough energy effectively that you just generate much, much more output. There's more to it, of course. It's exhausting all the skills when you play them, so you're going to run out of skills in your deck. Um, in hallway fights, this typically won't matter. Ironclad deals enough damage with attacks that you usually only go through your deck like one and a half times in hallway fights, so it's, it's just not going to be that big a deal. In boss fights, uh, it can be awkward. You often don't want to play Corruption the first time you draw it in a boss fight. However, given the... Um, stuff we just said about this deck, which it would be good in. Uh, we know that the deck's drawing more cards than it can play anyway. 
So it's probably not going to be that big a deal to draw Corruption a couple of times when it doesn't want to play it, because it will have other cards to be playing. So Corruption typically goes in a deck which has more card draw than like energy ability to play the cards drawn. Corruption also, of course, says Exhaust on it, so any of the Exhaust energies that are available to Ironclad can go absolutely bonkers with it, and that can be very, 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 very strong. But even without any of that going on, Corruption's already a very good card, it's just with uh, any deck that's drawing a lot of cards. Is Dead Branch still absolutely broken? Yeah, absolutely. Dead Branch is a very, very good relic. We got one of... Yeah, I mean, this is probably the, the best elite fight for us. We don't expect to beat this elite fight without taking damage, unfortunately. That's just not something that Ironclad's going to be doing. I'll probably use the attack potion next turn. I should have used it this turn. I guess I got Whirlwind. Alright, clothesline's nice. Nine nine fifteen is enough to kill this guy. Against the tri sentries, you want to kill one of the guys on the outside because they rotate whether they're attacking or debuffing every turn, and the guys on the outside are synced. You don't want to take eighteen um, on one turn if you could just take nine on each turn. It's a lot easier to deal with it. Yeah, the little cog on the enemies is Artifact, which negates one debuff. So you, I'm not sure that it goes a little bit fast to notice, but when I um, played uh, Uppercut right there, applying one weak and applying one vulnerable, both of these are debuffs. So I didn't actually get the weak applied that got blocked by the artifact charge, and instead I only applied the vulnerable to the enemy. Of course it went away before it mattered anyway. It does mean that I'm not weakening them, which has caused us to take a little bit more damage than we would have otherwise in the fight. But we still come away with it just 12 below max health. We have a pen nib. Every 10th attack we play deals double damage. This can be abused very heavily by Ironclad. If you have like a Whirlwind, for example, and you can set it up with a pen nib, it can just deal massive amounts of damage. Our options are Headbutt, Armaments, and Hemokinesis. So at this point, there's like a, a, a big decision going on based on what I think Ironclad runs look like. I'm going to take Armaments. You can take Hemokinesis here. Hemokinesis and upgrade it, and your deck gets very, very good at dealing damage. Very, very good at dealing damage. Um, Yeah, my experience of playing Ironclad, though, is Ironclad has quite a lot of card draw that puts a bunch of cards in their hand all at once. Ironclad has a lot of upgrades which are very valuable and usually not enough campfires to get them all. Uh, there are just some really good reasons why Armaments is very good. And again, Ironclad struggles to block enough early on in the game. So this card makes block. It also can upgrade our other blocks. If you draw this card with Defend, you can just play it, upgrade the Defend, and then the Defend blocks for 8, and you've effectively got an 8 block for 1 energy, which is a pretty good deal. It's like a pretty good block card. So Armaments has some, some really nice upgrades sides and then just generally it is a solid block card immediately. Headbutt's very solid too. We already have a spot weakness so we already have a particular card that we would like to recur often to scale more quickly and Headbutt could do that for us. Headbutt's just generally solid in Ironclad. There are lots of things you can do with Headbutt that are quite strong. And Hemokinesis is an excellent source of damage Especially when upgraded, this card becomes very good at dealing damage. It just doesn't really... <laughs> doesn't do much else. Doesn't do much else. So if you're already doing alright for damage, it's not such a big deal. I'm actually not going to upgrade Armaments first. Armaments is a great upgrade, but for this elite fight, we're either going to be against Gremlin Knob or Lagavulin. Both of them are immensely, immensely 
easier if you apply weak to them. So I'm going to get a second take of weak on uppercut for this fight. We can still play armaments and upgrade one of the cards that we care about. Um, probably spot weakness here, maybe anger even. Let's go anger. Seven. Yeah. And just start now. Oh. I didn't draw uppercut. I guess that's sort of fine. I guess Lagavulin, typically, you just play your block guards a lot. Lagavulin's sort of a boring fight. Let's go armaments on spot weakness, I think. What does this dude do? He attacks us twice, and then he puts a sort of nasty debuff on us that reduces our strength and dexterity by one, so all of our uh, attacks and blocks work slightly worse. This blocks for four instead of five now. Uh, okay. We just kill him next turn. Take some damage, that's fine. We have so much max HP that even though we're uh we're 30 below max health right now, we're still above 50. Pantograph means that at the start of boss combat we heal 25 HP, so we shouldn't have to rest in this act with that. It's really nice. Interruptions here a body slam, sever soul, and thunderclap. Uh not a huge fan of body slam until the deck's running. Body slam's weird. Um Ironclad decks usually end up being pretty good at blocking by the end of the game. And you often end up with an Ironclad deck at the end of the game where like Body Slam would be incredible, especially Body Slam upgraded. Um, doesn't cost any energy. So if you have a deck that's drawing a lot of cards and blocking a lot, Body Slam upgraded is just like really, really good. But at this point in the game, our deck sucks at blocking and Body Slam just isn't that incredible yet. So it's like picking a card that's going to be good in the deck once we arrive at it, but it doesn't really help us get there. Something like Armaments is much better at helping us get to the deck that we're trying to get to. Body Slam, not quite as much. Oh, just got offered a new Relic Hovering Kite. Discard one and gain one energy at the start of each turn. False. Weird. I'm not sure how good that is. You'd need a lot of card draw in your deck, probably. Sever Soul, Exhaust Soul, non-attack cards in our hand, deal 16 damage. This is mostly just a damage card. Um, yeah, it's mostly just a damage card. Generally speaking, your Exhaust Synergy stuff cares about keeping your skills around. So, exhausting all of your skills with Sever Soul is eh. And Thunderclap's just a fairly bad damage card. It's just not very good. It, like, wishes it was Whirlwind, but isn't. I don't know. This card's just not very good. Um, the value of the vulnerable being applied to all enemies isn't great because you're typically going to be focusing one of them down, not trying to kill them all at once. It's like just a pretty bad card. Okay, we have a regal pillow, so we heal more when we rest. So we have like health and sustain times a gazillion million trillion. And our options from the store are like Flame Barrier, Second Spot Weakness. There are potions. There's a card remove. I think the only stuff I'm going to talk about here is card remove, spot weakness, and flame barrier, because I just well, I'll talk about dropkick a little bit. This card sucks. Alright, cool. Done. I would absolutely buy feed if I could afford it. Also. Also mention that. Hey Electro Bolt. How you doing this morning? Is Thunderclap the worst card in the game? Absolutely not. There are some cards which are much worse than Thunderclap. So, um, Flame Barrier is a very, very good block card. This is what I'm going to buy. It's just a very good block card. It doesn't... 
make that much block per energy? Like, unupgraded, it's only making six block per energy, right? But keep in mind that Ironclad often wants to block on turns and does not have enough block guards in his deck. Often on our block turns, our issue is not so much that we um, don't have enough energy to block with as it is that we don't have enough cards that block to spend our energy on. And so Flame Barrier being a two-cost block card is, is just excellent. There are also like all sorts of other things down the line that work really well with it. It's very good against multi-attack enemies as well, because this is also a source of damage. Deal four damage to the attacker. This is every time that you're attacked. So if birds attack you six times or something, you're dealing 24 damage to them. And the upgrade is great as well. This is a very good card against the Guardian actually as well. Spot weakness, uh, strength scaling. I took spot weakness very high priority earlier, but it's not actually a very good strength scaling card. Like I took it because I needed a strength scaling card to make sure I could beat champ, for example. But I don't like want a ton of these. It's just like <laughs> it's not that good a card. It's very important to have one. It's not that good. And then we can card remove. If we were going to card remove, we'd get rid of a strike. And that would be like fine. But I'd rather have a flame barrier. The real boy is gifted sub to Hailfix. Thanks so much for the gift sub, Hailfix. Log Bomo show to the both of you. Hey, Arrow Light Drink. Yeah, if you do a 24 hour stream, I figure it's hard for the stream not to be friendly to all time zones, right? <laughs> Alright, so let's buy the flame barrier. And move on up. Did Metamorphosis get more new art? Yeah, I think they've added art for the new cards. Rough fight. I'm going to smoke bomb this, I think. Yep, I'm just going to smoke bomb this. This guy's going to... Okay. The only other thing is smoke bomb could be used on an Act 2 Elite who we can't kill. But... Honestly, I think we can kill all the Acto Elites already, just about. So, this side's going to deal us quite a bit of damage. Well, hmm. the other thing is the fight's going to steal our gold. And we're going to go to a store in Act 2 and not be able to buy anything. Because I don't think we're killing this guy before he gets away. Unless we just sacrificed HP. Nah. I'm going to smoke bomb it. Smoke bombing does lose us the uh, card choice from the fight as well. Armaments is the next upgrade. This is just so valuable, being up able to upgrade all the cards in our hand for those of combat. Very, very, very good in long fights. So this could be a longer fight. This will be a longer fight. Armaments upgrade isn't as important in just regular hallway fights at all. This is a bad first hand for Gremlin Nub. We've drawn all of our block cards and spot weakness. It's not what we want. We wanted to spot weakness and actually have it go off. This is better. Getting the weak on him. I think it's worth it to get all of our cards upgraded. Worth it to keep vulnerable on him. He's trying to vulnerable us now. And he'll just die next turn. Definitely took some damage in this fight. Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. Um, I wonder if that word has multiple pronunciations. Kremlinov gives us a steroid potion. Gave us, what's the relic? A bottled flame, so we can choose an attack card and put it in our hand at the start of combats. Uh, currently, we could put Uppercut in our hand at the start of combats, and that would be fine. Get the weak source available straight away. We could also take a Rampage. Rampage is a really interesting Ironclad card. This by itself offers enough scaling to win fights if you can block a decent amount. 
it's weird. There's some amount of block where like it doesn't matter how much scaling you have because a strike is enough to kill because you're blocking so much. And then you get into the gray areas, and Rampage is one of the slower scaling solutions, which, you know, will start coming up in decks which can block very well, but not well enough to just kill with, like, any damage at all. Rampage can get you there. It's pretty slow scaling, though. It's, like, good enough for Act 2 boss fights and Act 2 elites sometimes. Might take it. Uh, Intimidate's sort of a garbage card. Generally, one of the weird things about this game is that it might seem like zero cost cards are really strong because you can play them for zero cost and stuff, and that's really cool. You're like adding more value to your hand or whatever. One of the really important things in this game is spending your energy effectively, and at the start of the game you can't do that because your deck is full of strikes and defense, and spending your energy to get this conversion rate just isn't good. Spending one energy to get five block just isn't good. And so adding zero cost cards to your deck does not improve that problem for you at all. Adding cards which cost two to your deck does. It means that you can spend your energy to do more impactful things. Will I upload the over explains to YouTube? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Uh, Shockwave is one of the best ironclad cards. Just the weak and the vulnerable are so valuable. It blocks for so much. It deals so much damage. In in just like almost any situation you can be in, this card does an immense numerical amount. So I'm just going to take Shockwave. It's a very, very good card. And I'm going to go ahead and bottle Uppercut. Pretty good turn for Pennib there. So much over explain. That is what happens when it is over explain time. It doesn't matter how we play the rest of the fight. I don't think there's any way we can fail to kill it. Um, fail to kill it and take damage at least. Rampage is back. Dropkick and Fire Breathing are both very poor. There's one situation where drop kick's okay. If you have no other source of scaling and you're going into Act 2 boss and you have a deck with like True Grits in it and you can exhaust a lot of cards, you can maybe look to try to set up some sort of... It doesn't even have to be an infinite combo with drop kick. And just... It can just be like you set up a situation where you're playing drop kick four times and shrug it off four times and just like your shrug it off draws the drop kick and your drop kick draws the shrug it off because you've exhausted a ton of other cards in your deck. And that can be okay with Dropkick, but generally you don't have much reason to think that you're going to be headed down that road, especially in a deck with spot weakness in it already. We just don't care much for that. We don't have any True Grit either. Um, Fire Beating's one of the worst cards in the game. It's, it's interesting. This card would maybe not be that bad on Silent. Like, it might be alright. And Ironclad is a class that's, like, got a lot of attacks and spends a lot of energy on attacks. The thing about Ironclad is that it doesn't actually play that many attacks. It plays a lot of like two cost attacks. And also that Ironclad has a lot of vulnerable, so you want damage to be coming from like attack damage. And this damage does not have benefits from vulnerable. So it ends up just being a very mediocre card. Just doesn't deal that much damage. I'm gonna take Rampage. It's just like okay. I like Rampage. I like having one Rampage in a deck. I think it has a lot of value in uh some Act 2 fights. And my inclination here is the Bash, Shockwave, Rampage, and Flame Barrier are the good upgrades. Flame Barrier makes this coming fight the easiest out of all of them, I think. But we don't care about this coming fight being easy. We have 75 health for it. Um... Rampage is probably the best option for Act 2 Elites at the moment. I'm just going to take Rampage. Me trying to explain chat draft could be fun. Um, I was going to try to explain a chat draft if we got to 100 subs on the day. That was the... Uh, that's currently the, the biggest sub goal. 
is me trying to over explain why Twitch chat is doing the things that Twitch chat is doing. I don't know why I like offered to do that. Either line is fine, I think. We could uppercut strike to try to stop him from getting this big attack off, or we can just not. Like, we have so much health, it doesn't really matter. We do want to end the fight on as high health as possible. I'm not going to sit here and work out how to do that, though. <laughs> like, um, yeah, it's difficult to work out which line does that the best. What was the sub goal for 550? Sub goal for 550 is a defect over explain run on YouTube. So like not a situation where I'm falling asleep and crazy. A situation where I'm actually saying intelligent things. I'll also do a defect over explain live tonight. That's for 90 subs on the stream, that one. If we get there. This guy does a decent job of beating up Ironclad in situations where Ironclad doesn't have a ton of lock, but we have a ton of health. This is often the trump that Ironclad has available to him. Just doesn't really matter if you do a lot of damage to us if we have a lot of health and a lot of sustain. No Ogbomo show. Did I miss that? Did I, like, completely miss that? <laughs> Sorry, it's sort of late. Agba Musho to you as well, Albion. And AJ Roski, thanks so much for gifting that sub, Albion. As I slowly go insane and lose my grasp on reality, everything becomes less clear. You've been assuming that everything I've been saying was intelligent just because I was saying it. Well, I'm trying my best, but I, mean, I, I think I've been doing okay so far. I haven't been awake for that long at the moment. We're only 12 and a half hours into the stream. I'm probably still functional. All right, fight is over, act is over. Uh, we are offered Barricade, Dark Embrace, and Feed. Um, Barricade's, like, okay. It's okay. It's not great. Barricade fits very well into sort of the dream Ironclad deck. The Ironclad deck that makes a ton of block while scaling up and then wins. Um, the thing is that deck wins without Barricade. Like, just by virtue of what it is. Barricade doesn't really help in any way for that deck to do what it's doing. It already has a bunch of cards that make a ton of block, and it's able to make enough block every turn, and then it scales up and wins. So, like, what is what is Barricade even doing here? There's some fancy combos you can play around with with Barricade and Entrench, which doubles your block. You can end up making immense amounts of block, and then you can win with Body Slam. Or, honestly, if you have that much block, you can win with anything else, basically. But currently, Barricade's not that good in our deck. It's very difficult for us to play it. It costs us an entire turn unless we get an Energy Relic from the boss fight, which is not guaranteed. And our deck doesn't actually make more block than enemies in Act 2 attack for. So, like, we're not... We're going to play our Barricade, and then we're going to make 16 block the next turn, get attacked for 22, saving no block. And uh, then the next turn, we're going to get attacked for, like, 22 again, and block for 16. Saving no block. Um, that's typically how Barricade is going to function as we go through Act 2. 
So it's a it's a card which looks really great and strong in the situation where it's great and strong, but it's really hard to get to the situation where it's great and strong, and once you've gotten there, most of the problems are already solved. Dark Embrace is a very, 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 very solid way to draw a lot of cards. It's always a little bit iffy to get into exhaust synergies when you haven't seen a true grit. About a third of Ironclad's cards have exhaust written on them, but we don't actually have many at all. We have like Ghostly Armor and Shockwave and Ascender's Bane, sort of. So <laughs> our Act 1 has not done a good job of landing us in clear exhaust synergy territory. Uh, we also don't know that we have enough energy to really benefit much from the card draw. Something that's great about Anger is that it's a very, very strong card on 3 energy through Act 2. We want to try to make sure that our deck continues being very great on 3 energy through Act 2, because we have no guarantee right now that we have 4 energy for Act 2. And we would like to be able to beat Act 2, um, whether we have 3 or 4 energy. So adding a 2 energy card that draws us a bunch of cards one, two energy is really expensive. Two, drawing a bunch of cards isn't that good if we're still on three energy. We care more about playing the cards that we draw every turn than we do about drawing more cards. Um, and feed uh, eats things. And eating things is great. So, we're going to take feed. I've talked quite a lot about how much I love max HP on Ironclad. One thing that I haven't really mentioned is that Ironclad can get so much max HP that he doesn't really even need block. If you get Reaper and have a deck which can scale strength, Reaper heals you from how much damage it's dealt. We also have Sustain Relics already, Pentagraph and Regal Pillow. So if we like take feed here and feed another like five times and get up to 100 plus max HP, we can be going into fights and taking like 50 damage and then we go to a campfire and rest and it's fine. We can go to Act 2 boss fights and they just don't deal damage fast enough to kill us and we spot weakness, take 90 damage, win the fight, and then like come close to full healing from the end of the act and go into Act 3 and we're fine. So getting a little bit more max HP I think is, is very valuable and feed is great for that. Okay... Uh, I'm going to take Snekoi because it's like the best relic in the game, just about. Does anybody... Does anybody need me to explain why Snekoi is good? I'm sure somebody does. Let's talk about the other ones first. Ari is surprisingly good. Ari is a, actually a really, really good relic to exchange your starting boss relic for. It's really good to have an Ari on the first floor. Getting to see 15 cards and adding some really nice cards to your deck is just uh, just super, super good. It it pales in comparison to other relics at the uh, first boss reward. You're generally really, really wanting a fourth energy here. Sometimes I'll take Ari after the second boss if there's a particular thing my deck needs to round it out. Like if I need a way to scale strength on Ironclad, for example, looking at 15 cards with Ari is a really good way to get that. And sometimes uh, you already have four energy and the other relics aren't really doing that much for you. A fifth energy isn't nearly as valuable as the fourth energy. Runic Cube, whenever you lose HP, draw a card. This can be very, very good. Drawing a lot of cards in a combat is immensely strong. So Runic Cube can be really good. I don't think people should be overlooking Runic Cube, especially in the sort of deck I'm describing where we have very good sustain relics. We might not be blocking that well. Our deck in particular benefits a lot from drawing a lot of cards. We have Anger to draw lots of. We have Rampage to recur. We have Spot Weakness to recur. So like Runic Cube would actually be pretty good in our deck right now. But Sneko is just insane. Um, Sneko is insane because it draws two additional cards each turn. And, uh, that's really, really, really good. How do you say this guy's name? Joan Ribs? How do you say Joan Ribs? I don't know. You can say it however you like. Um, I've, ne I've seen lots of, like, controversial 
controversial takes on SnackOI, like, I've sat down and done the math with a spreadsheet, and I've determined that this is the net output on cards you can play every turn. And it's... It always just, like... Uh. So the two most important resources that decks have in Slay the Spire are card draw and energy, right? And I have never seen somebody just try to analyze how good it is to draw an additional two cards a turn. People are like, they they take that, but they think that it's part of the Sneko overall thing and they have to analyze it together. Like, yeah, you're drawing two extra things a turn. Now let's analyze how they change value with the randomized costs. Can you play more cards or fewer cards a turn? On average, how many cards do you get a turn? It's like, that's not, that is so little the point. Drawing two additional cards a turn is insane. We have, we have Rampage to recur. We get it way, way more often. We have Spot Weakness to recur. We get it far more often. We get Feed. We're far more likely to draw Feed on the turn where we want to eat something. We have Armaments. Armaments now upgrades an extra two cards. We have cards like Fiend Fire and Ironclad, which now hits for an extra 20 damage. Um... Drawing an extra two cards is just insane. It's just really, really, really good for every class. I think it's best of all on Ironclad. And it's... It's just very, very good. Do I think it's a problem having Anger in my deck for Sneko Eye? I'm probably not going to play it some of the time that I draw it. And it would be the first card that I took out of the deck, for sure. All right. Enderhog! Ogbomo show to you as well. Thank you very much for the Twitch Prime sub. Much appreciated. Really appreciate the support. Glad you're enjoying the show. Um, Advent Skynet has timed you out for sharing a link. Boxley, sorry. I'm going to unban you. My bot uh, lets you share links if you've been watching the channel for like long enough. I think you need a thousand points or something, but it to deal with spam from bots, it times people out if they share links and it hasn't seen them for long enough before. Okay. We don't necessarily want elite fights, but I think we're okay at them. We don't have a whirlwind. We're really bad against gremlin leader, aren't we? Hmm. Pretty bad against Gremlin Leader. I'm going to go up the left side here, get lots of events. I don't like Hallway Fights in Act 2 very much at all. I don't think this deck does an incredible job of taking Hallway Fights without taking damage in Act 2. We could feed in them. That's sort of nice. What is the ELU in my spreadsheets? Oh, that's a metric that I created to try to describe how highly I prioritize taking a card. So if uh, a card has high ELU, it means that it gets taken instead of other cards. If I see um, like a footwork and a... Uh, what's a better example? If I see a footwork and an afterimage, then both of those are high ELO cards. And so if I take the footwork, that will get a significant boost to its ELO and the after image will get a significant drop to its elo. Uh, whereas if I see a footwork and a dagger spray, dagger spray is not a particularly high elo card, so if I take the footwork, footwork won't get that much of a boost to it. It's just a system of trying to describe how I prioritize taking different cards. Straight away, first turn of that guy. I upgrade six cards with armaments. Boom. Um. Oh gosh, not a very witty user. Thanks very much for two months subbed in a row with Witch Prime and Aralai Trink. Thanks for gifting a sub to Dino Modes. Ogbomo shoot of the both of you. That's the uh, overexplained for Silent Reached. Next goal for the stream is Defect Overexplain. Thank you so much for all of the support today, guys. I'm taking the weekend off, so I wanted to do a big stream so I could feel feel good about taking some time off. And uh, yeah, this is being great. I'm having fun. 
best class for beating game with common deck achievement. I did it with defect. I think ironclad is easier though. I did it first time with defect. It's like a, it's a doable achievement. With ironclad, you can just play a uh, bunch of shrug it offs and body slams, basically, and win that way. I have Pendib? I don't have Pendib anymore. This is one of the bonuses of taking Act 2 Holly fights, is we get to uh, feed in them. Disarm's one of the strongest cards in the game. Making enemies lose 2 strength forever. This just mitigates so much damage. Against like some of the bosses, for example, will attack you like 2 or 3 times in a turn, and the fight will go for 8 turns or something, and this will... For one energy, be worth 30 or 40 mitigation over the course of that fight without upgrading it. If we fight against like Book of Stabbing or something, it's going to be worth like 60 to 80 mitigation straight away. It's a one energy card, but it's like it's very, very, very easily worth putting in a Sneko I deck. I should do 24 hour streams every day. Shh. Sure. Uh, sounds great. Sounds great. Did you change your username, Opta? Sometimes the bot is weird, and sometimes it loses track of points. My bot is self-written, it's not great. Anyway, uh, Havoc, play the top card of your draw pile and exhaust it. Havoc's a great card with any exhaust synergies. Also, Havoc Plus is just incredible if you're uh, not playing a deck with Snekoi in it. This card is just really good. Like, just playing that card on your turn is really good. Especially, keep in mind that Ironclad often has high-cost cards. If you look at our stuff, we've added, like, an uppercut, a shockwave, a flame barrier. So we're often going to be hitting something worth two energy for zero, and just adding that to the cards that we've played. So Havoc Plus, especially, is really good. Really nice with exhaust energies, but we're not doing that right now. Several souls, some extra damage. And with Snekawai, like, maybe we could take this, but 16 damage isn't actually that great. I'm going to take the Disarm. Doesn't Demon Form absolutely suck against any fight that isn't very long? Typically, a deck's going to have, like, one or two cards in it that will beat boss fights for it, and Demon Form is one of the most straightforward options. Like, yeah, it is bad against fights that don't go long. At least it's not particularly good against fights that don't go long. Uh, like I said, Anger is not very good with Sakai, so let's get rid of that. Brutality! The start of your turn, lose 1 HP and draw a card. Okay. That's not really the one I wanted either. Uh, I don't think we want a Ritual Dagger when we already have a feed. Doesn't make much sense to me. Ritual Dagger gains stuff from killing enemies. Feed also gains stuff from killing enemies. We're going to be running into some uh, overlap there in probably pretty negative ways. You can upgrade it to make it cost 0, even it costs 3. Yeah, um, the way that armaments, like mid-battle upgrades, work with cards which change cost when they get upgraded is that they will change their cost if you upgrade them mid-combat. So if you draw a Havoc and it costs 3 and then you upgrade it with armaments, it will cost 0 for the rest of the turn. Well, until you randomize its cost again, actually. Get this guy. Delicious. And killing second mugger better. Usually has more health. So I usually go after the first guy because he has less health. Havoc shrug it off and clothesline. Havoc plus this time. Havoc plus is actually worse than Havoc not upgraded in this deck because of Snack Away. So shrug it off is just sort of a premium ironclad common, very, very, very strong. Clothesline's great. 
Um, applying too weak is awesome. Probably we want a clothesline. Yeah, I think I'll take a clothesline. Since energy costs are irrelevant, um, clothesline I think edges out Shrug it off. Although it would be nice to have more block guards and Shrug it off is a card I wouldn't mind putting in the deck at all. This upgrade is going to be probably like Flame Barrier or Shockwave. I think we have so much vulnerable and weak from other places that we don't care about making this 5. So we'll probably just go Flame Barrier. We just want to play Flame Barrier every time we draw it, basically. Even if it costs 3, we're pretty likely to want to play it. Why is it worse than Havoc plus exactly as bad as Havoc? No, because Havoc has the line where we draw it and it costs like 3 and then we upgrade it with armaments and all of a sudden it costs 0. Whereas Havoc plus we can't upgrade mid-turn. Um, I don't know if I want to try to feed on this guy or not. Probably not. Probably not. Although, the disarm I just drew makes me think maybe I should have been. Taking a little bit of damage. Got a couple of wounds in the deck, maybe. Hey, you're welcome, Boxy. Beat Ascension 15 a couple of days ago. That's awesome. Congratulations. That's an accomplishment. It's like a lot of work. A lot of, uh, work's the wrong word. A lot of, uh, determination. We have the boot. The boot's a meme. The boot, whenever you would deal four or less unblocked attack damage, increase it to five. This is a meme. This doesn't really do anything much at all, ever. Uh, feel no pain, shrug it off, exhume. These are three pretty good cards. Shrug it off is the most, like, clearly just generally good card here. Um, Exhume gets us back Disarm and Shockwave and Feed. And getting back all of these would be potentially really, really, really good. Against uh, this guy... Mm, none of them's really that incredible against them. Disarm's probably the best. Gillipane's just... It just makes so much block. This deck does less well with Feel No Pain than most Ironclad decks do. We just don't have that much exhaust. Feel No Pain would probably make somewhere in the vicinity of 9 to 12 block for us in a regular combat, which is just not that much for one energy. Um, but as the as the game goes on, it's going to be making more and more and more block as we get more cards that interact with exhaust. And then Shrug It Off is Shrug It Off. I guess it's not for one energy either, I should say. It's for whatever energy it randomizes to. Yes, G West, it's going okay. So, yeah. Defect has the highest win rate on Spire Logs. Defect has a lower win rate than my chat draft. Drafting Defect has in my stream on Spire Logs, so. My congratulations on beating Ascension 15 seem hollow and condescending, considering how high I've win streaked it. There, what? No, come on. <laughs> it's, it's not easy to beat this game in Ascension 15. Legitimately, it's just not, not easy. Uh, I'm going to take Exhume here. I think we have enough value on the uh, stuff that we're grabbing back. I don't think Speed Potion's super great, but Poison Potion's certainly not incredible either. Speed Potion's probably going to block for... Speed Potion's really awkward. Gains 5 dexterity at the end of your turn, you lose 5 dexterity. So it's like a potion that's really good on turns where you need to block more, but 
like every turn you ever need to block more it's because you didn't draw any block cards basically so like you use your potion and then you play your one block card and you get five more block yeah like <laughs> whereas storied potion gets us more damage for a turn but there legitimately are turns where we drew a lot of attack cards and we want to get even more damage there aren't many turns in the game where you drew a lot of block cards and you're going to play a lot of block cards and what you want is more block. So speed potion's pretty pretty weak unless you can uh, generate a charge of artifact so that you don't lose the dexterity at the end of your turn, in which case getting five decks for an entire boss fight is very, very strong. Um, upgrade, now that we have the ability to exhume things, the disarm upgrade goes up quite a lot in value, so let's grab that. Since we're likely to be playing that twice in a fight. Peace pipe, we can remove cards from our deck at rest sites, cool. I don't know how much we'll be doing that, we might a little bit. This is bad, it's a bad hand. Uh, this is going to be a poison potion. In this fight, we really want to kill the back slaver as quickly as possible. I think I'm going to just tank like 7 billion damage here. That's going to be really fun. I'm really looking forward to that. Yep. Yeah, that's going to be enjoyable. All right. Uh... Yeah. Okay. Learning how many things Artifact can do. Yeah, Artifact has a lot of a lot of pretty cool interactions in this game. Alright, let's eat this guy. This is probably a fight where we want to uh, um, exhume our feed, actually. Get two feeds off in this one. I only have 75 HP. Yeah, hopefully we'll be alright, yeah? Uh, can we feed again? Feed costs zero right now. Rampage, clothesline, that's 20. 32. We steroid potion, do we could? Alright, steroid potion. make sure we get that off without taking a ton more damage. Especially since we're taking damage every turn from Brutality now, we don't want to extend the fight forever. Seven billion damage may kill us. We've got a bird face turn. Whenever we play a power, we heal two HP. I don't have a power, do I? Brutality. All right, that's sort of funny. <laughs> I'm not sure that that's a net healing us, but okay. And our card options are a ghostly armor plus, a clash, and a bloodletting plus. Um, this is gonna be a skip from me, I believe. Ghostly armor is the only card that is like worth considering. 13 block. Ghostly armor's okay. We'll take ghostly armor, I guess. Hey Twinge, thanks for the host. Welcome dark Twinge viewers. We're up super late doing a 24 hour stream. Over explaining an iron cloud run for Slay the Spy right now. Sub goals today have been, uh, we did some chat draft sub goals first, and now we're doing over explain sub goals. So we're doing an ironclad over explain, and then next up is a silent over explain. And if we hit the defect sub goal, we'll do a defect over explain next, and then I will die from talking too much. There are uh, only a certain number of words you can say in 24 hours, and if you say more than them, you die. And at that point, I will die in real life. But I'm enjoying it, I'm enjoying my last day. Uh, how was your stream, Twinch? Hope you're doing well. When did you get up to? 
Clash is just terrible with Sneko Eye. It's not very good without Sneko Eye, and it's terrible with Sneko Eye. In fact, it's terrible without Sneko Eye, and worse than terrible with Sneko Eye. Bloodletting! I could imagine taking Bloodletting somehow if I had a Reaper in the deck and was healing to full at the end of every fight, but. Honestly, like, this card wouldn't be that good if it didn't say lose 3 HP on it. It would still be... Yeah, like... <laughs> it would be marginal if it said didn't lose... If it didn't say lose 3 HP on it. Coldest Simulator was enjoyable for a while, but man, it gets grindy. Yeah. I, uh... My experience with Coldest Simulator was that it felt... A lot... Like Cookie Clicker. Like, a third of the gameplay felt like Cookie Clicker, and then the rest of the gameplay felt like they weren't telling me what to do very well. Panic is working from home today. Great day to get a cold. Enjoy yourself. Get some work done. <laughs> hey, Mio. I'm Vomo Show to you as well. Thank you very much. Four months subbed in a row. Really appreciate that support. Oh boy. I should change the main sub goal. If we get to 600 subs, I have to do a Dr. Valen cosplay. Dr. Valen's the, like, female scientist from XCOM. It'll be interesting. Caitlin's working on it already. I'm going to take the ghostly armor. I just, I feel like we could use a little bit of block. Okay, the store with 300 gold just seems like a very good idea. So even though it's taking me through some sort of nasty stuff and risking um, not getting a campfire. In fact, risking is the wrong word. It is causing me to not get a campfire. I think it's still worth going for. Do you want a shockwave again? Probably not. We're unlikely to get to feed in this fight. This guy hits too hard. Yeah, we'll just play it now then. We might as well shockwave again. There's no reason not to. With terrible, terrible German accent. Yeah, I can't even do a terrible German accent. Like, some of the people in my stream have heard me attempt to say German words. It's just not happening. It's not. I want to apologize to everybody involved. Definitely class it as an unfolding sort of game, like Cookie Clicker, Darkroom Candy Box, with more lore, interesting writing, but even more tedium. I read a review that was like, just write a visual no novel already, or something like that. <laughs> what female cosplay? Dr. Valen. Um, Ray. Let me get a... Where is Dr. Valen? I've been growing my hair out for it too. Dr. Valen, these weapons, these abuses of science, we still have an opportunity to use them for the greater good. This is Dr. Valen. I should actually throw it up on screen. Whatever. That's what a good streamer would do. I was maybe a good streamer 10 hours ago. Even then it was questionable. Uh... Clothesline, Headbutt Plus, and Warcry. Headbutt Plus is okay. We definitely like benefit from putting armaments on top or flame barrier on top, or from if we like wanted to disarm and we drew it and cost three, we can put it on top and try to re-randomize its cost. So there are reasons to like headbutt in this deck. Headbutt goes on top. Yeah, there are enough reasons to like headbutt I think. I don't think we want another clothesline. It doesn't deal very good damage and we're not having much issues with weakening enemies at this point. You don't get anything extra for weakening an enemy for 14 turns instead of 12 in a fight that goes until turn 3. So. Turns out. <laughs> turns out that's not actually that valuable. You don't think the hair up front is cooperating with my plan to grow it out. Nonsense. It's just the way I style it. Just the way I style it. Um, this is really interesting. We've got some strong options here. Barricade? I talked about how Barricade just wasn't that exciting. 
um, at the end of Act 1. That was before we had a Sneko Eye. When Barricade costs between 0 and 3 instead of 3, and you have a Sneko Eye, Sneko Eye means that you have trouble controlling how much block you make every turn. Like, Barricade gets a lot better when it costs between 0 and 3 instead of 3, and you can't control how much block you make every turn. Barricade's actually also really good against uh, Hyper Beam, because he attacks you every other turn. So, uh, like... On the off turn, you can make block and use it for something. So I think we are going to take Barricade. And then the question is, do we like remove a strike, which is quite valuable? Or do we go for another Ixium to get like another Disarm Blade or something like that? I don't know. Let's click on Barricade. Get that done. These other cards are for the most part... I mean, anything that has a zero energy cost is going to be difficult to justify spending money on with a Sneko Eye. There aren't many cards that are that good that cost zero energy. Um, Exhume or remove a strike. Getting rid of strikes is very nice with Sneko Eye. You often don't control which cards in your hand you play in a turn because some of them show up costing zero and so you end up like playing all of the cards in your deck. Sometimes you have a deck which doesn't care as much about getting rid of the basics because you draw more cards than you play every turn and you get to choose which cards to play and so like you'll have these cards in your deck but you don't actually play them. It's not quite as impactful to have them existing. Um, Sneko Sneko sort of forces you to play them. I I'm gonna remove a strike instead of taking another Exhum. Another Exhum sort of iffy, I feel like. Sound another new boss relic. Frozen Chorus are each combat with a Frost Orb instead of a Lightning Orb. Interesting. Interesting. I don't feel like that's very strong. That's a boss relic? <laughs> okay. Uh, we could go Liquid Bronze here. I don't think we need to. Is there a reason not to? Save it for the boss fight, I think. Yeah, save it for the boss fight. Liquid Bronze deals a lot of damage to this guy, but we have a Disarm Plus and an Exeum, so... Uh, that's got us covered, basically. I am about to take a lot of damage. We're gonna rest and pantograph. Let's defend. If you end your turn with empty slots, any empty slots, you channel one fro. Oh. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. If you end your turn with any empty slots, you channel a frost. No, 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 no. Okay. Well, that's definitely not weak. Yeah, Angry Andy. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's definitely not weak. <laughs> These overexplains get uploaded to YouTube. I think so, yeah. I don't want to think about what's happening um, in the future at all, because one of the things that's happening in the future is that I'm streaming for another 11-something hours. <sighs> I'd rather not dwell on that. Ooh, Barricade heals us for two as well. GG. We have a goal where I stream for another five hours. Uh, Mr. Streamer, I would like you to literally die. Would you die for me, please? Literally? No. Absolutely not. No. <laughs> 
Not, not okay with that. We got another Shockwave, a Wild Strike, a Perfected Strike. Shockwave's great. I don't know. I don't know if it's this good. We have so much weak and vulnerable. It's probably this good. Perfected Strike's, like, pretty bad. Whetstone will upgrade two random strikes for us. Thank you, Whetstone. Hey, Califan, how you doing? Is there some way for everything to suck less? This is just not going that well right now. I think we have to power down this cultist. Can't risk him getting out of control. Where is the love? Um, I don't know. You have to be alive to love, I think. Maybe it is going well. Maybe we get to feed on both of them. Oh, I have a uh, barricade in play. I should play the... Yeah, whoops. Okay, this would be a great fight to have a feel no pain. Also, my brain just dropped off a cliff. I've, like, stopped playing well. I'd, like... <laughs> <laughs> every, every every turn that I've played this fight has been atrocious. So that's fun. We now know exactly where my brain drops off a cliff. I don't actually know what this guy's AI is like anymore. It's been changed. Now we have a goal where I play Hello Kitty Adventure Island, the card game, to completion. Uh, that could be a thing that you donated to me specifically just you for. Maybe. To completion is such an awkward way to phrase that. Um, just have to draw our uh, Xume again. Very nice. Feed is feeding. So I have a metallicized True Grit and Rage. If I could get True Grit upgraded, it would be a really nice card to have for longer fights. Get rid of the crappy stuff in the deck. Replace it with like more copies of Flame Barrier effectively. Obviously, we're not actually making any more Flame Barriers, but if we get rid of half of our deck and still have Flame Barrier in it, we get to play Flame Barrier twice as often, more or less. Not a real game, you made it up to be funny, I see. What's weird about that? Just play until you finish. I think to completion is English language slang for, uh... Anyway, not gonna get into it. Um... It's a sex thing. It's a sex thing. Metallicize does heal me. Absolutely. Grit can remove wounds. We don't have any wounds. It can remove burns in Act 3. In Act 3, they don't give you, uh... They don't give you wounds anymore. Act 2 gives you a bunch of wounds, and Act 3 gives you a, ton a bunch of burns. It took me, like, 500 hours of playing this game to realize that the enemies in Act 3 give you burns, and the enemies in Act 2 give you wounds. Like... <laughs> actually, 500 hours or something of this game. So, yeah, we don't have to worry about wounds anymore, but we do have to worry about burns in Act 3. I like, uh, True Grit. And upgrade it. <laughs> Thank you so much for helping me beat this dead horse, guys. Okay, we can play Brutality, and then we take one damage every turn until we die. I don't know how long it takes us to kill this guy. I'm not going to play Brutality. I'm going to start working on his uh, artifact stacks instead. Let's beat this dead horse until completion. Ooh, a second wind. Can exhaust. Do we want the shockwave? Don't know. 
An exhaust the defend and the shockwave. Sure. Something like that. Are there status effects in Act 3? Yes. There's a variety of stuff in Act 3. Well, fuck. <laughs> Snekuai has betrayed me and this little shit has stolen my barricade. Wonder if we're dead. And yeah, I was still chugging along. Possibly dying here. We'll see. What does Exhum get us? Ghostly Armor Plus? Sort of interesting. Feels very odd to not have a feel no pain in this deck. Feels like a deck that should have a feel no pain. I would like that back, if you don't mind. I'm going to put armaments on top. Got a bunch of Forex games during this. Oh, okay. Have fun, Califan. I'm not going to touch that. Like, <laughs> keep Forexes away from me, please. It's just, uh, at some point in my life, I recognized that Forexes were not super healthy for me. I should stop playing Total War Warhammer 2. <laughs> Uh, have to do all achievements in a game of chat's choosing. That sounds incorrect. Alright! Definitely glad we have a lot of max HP right now. We could get Barricade in play, that would be cool. Hey! Angry White Ginger! Bomo show to you as well. Thank you very much for the sub and the support. Much appreciated. Glad you're enjoying the show. 16 times 2. This guy is no longer weak. Let's get him weakened. I have no feel no pain because I still feel pain. Who hurt me? It was Nick. Goodbye, ghostly armor. I miss you. This is a weird fight. I think we're okay. That barricade's quite valuable here. I'm not gonna play feed. I'm gonna go full greed and try to eat him. 47. The exact amount that I am blocking for. Fancy that. Nick is doing the spousal abuse. <laughs> oh, Nick. Um, playing PUBG with Nick was a lot of fun tonight. We're at 115 health. We have a Brutality, Double Tap, and a Berserk. These are, like, uniformly the worst cards in the game or something. Do you guys need me to over-explain why these cards are bad? Tell you what, I'm gonna take a minute or two, grab a glass of water, stretch my legs, because stretching my legs is important.
and I'll be right back. If any of you guys have a has like a question about why I'm not taking one of these that I could answer, um, I would love to. Like, please give me a, like a, like a specific question because I don't I don't I don't know where to start. <laughs> ah. Hello, cat. Hello. Cat. Cat. All right. So, um, can I talk about berserk plus mushroom synergy? Did Electrobolt ask that? No. You're t you're following in the the footsteps of Electrobolt. I love it. Mmm. Why would double tap be bad when I have zero cost attacks? Um well is it going to cost zero? It's just another copy of the attack, except we can only play it if we draw it at the same time as the attack, and all of our attacks want to be played once. Like, Claude's line doesn't do anything if it gets played the second time. I don't remember if double tap makes rampage double up. Feed doesn't really benefit much from being played twice either. I don't know. Double tap's like not the worst card, but it's it's generally bad. You draw it. You'd rather just put another attack in your deck if you want to, you know, 
play a second attack in a turn. You'd rather just draw a second attack so that you have a little bit more control over what's going on. Can I add a sub goal where I over explain the word completion to completion? Not for charity, not for children. Um, is Verdict still generally bad even after the change? I think it's an it's fascinating what they've done with Berserk. They took a card which was almost unplayable, and they managed to find a way to change it to make it worse. And that flabbergasts me. Like, the reason that Berserk was playable before was that you could take it for boss fights where your deck was energy starved. So I take a Berserk two floors before the Act 2 boss or something. I know that I'm going to be at below half health for, like, the second half of that fight. Boom, I have four energy in it. Wham. Uh, suddenly I'm able to win the fight. Berserk is not a card that is ever going to be good in a hallway fight because it costs one and it makes you one energy. So it takes you three turns before you're net positive on this investment. After, So you play it on the first turn and you're minus one card, minus one energy. On the second turn, you're minus one card, zero energy. On the third turn, you are minus one card, plus one energy. So after three turns... Of having this card in play, you have achieved seeing red. After three turns. It's like the bomb, except for energy, and worse. So, <laughs> so that's the problem with Berserk. Brutality is basically the same problem. Uh, you play it, you're at minus one card for the turn. On turn two, you're at net neutral cards and minus one HP. On turn three, you're at plus one card overall. At that point, most hallway fights are already done like it just doesn't really three turns from now is such a long long time from now these cards are just very very slow worse than the bomb kills for two with the urn yeah that's true that's true um yeah berserk is like god that card is bad he's gonna make enemies attack us for like like 15 more or something we do not get 15 block out of one energy even if you ignore the fact that i have to draw the card and play the card just the effect of the card would be bad if we got it for absolute free okay this is like almost a skip so runic pyramid is a very brave thing to do with snekulai because your hand will just get full of three cost cards which you cannot play so generally this is a no-go Calling Bell is bad. There are actually two boss relics here that would be actively bad, like would likely turn a winning run into a lost run for our deck. Berserk's upgrade is just zero energy cost. Twinge. Oh, somebody else got gotcha. you. Um, white beast statue is fine. Potions always drop after combat. Cool. We'll use lots of potions. We have uh, 115 max health. We're fighting Time Eater and we have Disarm. Time Eater has lots of multi-attacks and Time Eater's main thing is that it scales up in strength. So Disarm like is just the end for Time Eater. Time Eater just loses. If we can get to the boss, we win. So how do we get to the boss? This way. We don't have to go to fights um, elite or otherwise, if at all possible. There isn't as much to say about Act 3, typically. Typically in Act 3, you know what your deck does and you're trying to do it um, until you win. No bell we bail. Uh, yeah, Calling Bell is very bad. Um, that's my over-explain of that decision. Good talk, good talk. Hey, you Sim. How are you doing? Oh, I miss you saying hi. Sorry, Sim. I'm a little bit, uh... <laughs> 13 and a half hours in here. A little bit... Ooh, you know? <laughs> Having fun, though. Man, is this, uh, particularly early for you? Seems very early to be up. To me. So we're apparently going to die to one Orb Walker, which bodes well for the rest of the run. 
This fight's not going super hot. Did I say bodes well? I meant the other one. Bodes not well. Yeah, that one. Oh. <laughs> Attack and then gain strength. <laughs> um. Excuse me. Oh, hey, Sim. Thanks so much for the host. Oh, you're on your way to sleep. I got confused because you did the morning stream the other day. Gotcha. Hope your uh, hope your stream was awesome. So, I've caught a little bit of your FTL recently. Really enjoy watching you play FTL. Sims a great streamer. If you're looking for someone to check out, Sims is like my Sims my go-to late night lurk streamer. He's just such a chill. Sims like the the Bob Ross of modern video games, in my opinion. I don't know. I don't know if that's a deliberate brand you're going for, Sim. I'm sorry if I'm, if I'm, uh, I'm just sharing my my experience with Sims stream. I just watch Sims stream and I like, am overwhelmed by a feeling of calm. And peace, and then I uh, often fall into a blissful sleep. Gosh, we are getting. Very unfortunate with the randomization costs on these cards. We're having just a lot of trouble dealing any damage. On the bright side... I guess we're not taking that much damage either. We're just like wasting turns and our deck is getting worse and he's scaling up. It's uh... problematic. Our deck is getting worse because he's putting a bunch of burns into it. Okay, we get him next turn. You would hope. Play Brutality first to heal for two. You're expecting the length of my over explains is inversely proportional to the hours I've been streaming. This one's been really long. I think it might be a situation where I start ranting more, actually, <laughs> the longer that I go. <laughs> Sorry about that if that's uh if that's actually a thing. True grit, I love this card upgraded with Sekoi here. Um stripping out the bad cards from the deck as we go through it the first and second time is is very nice for longer fights. However, I don't think we're going to get it upgraded. I think we have to rest. We're just taking too much damage. Deck could use like a bludgeon. Deck could just use a card that deals a bunch of damage to the bad guy and makes him dead. Against somebody who has like 50 health. Twin strike, yeah. Fire breathing. I believe we've talked about fire breathing already. But yeah, these are just low impact cards in a deck which is randomizing energy costs. So it really wants the expensive stuff. Gain 999 gold and become cursed with two normalities. It's a lot of gold. There's no reason to think that we need that gold. I'm going to fight a boss from Act 1. Why is energy potion 2 energy? A little while ago they changed it. It used to be that at Ascension... 11, I believe is when the potions changed. Your potions would start doing different things. And I think... Like, maybe that was cool for, like, high ascension players to see their potions do different things and stuff. But realistically, from a design perspective, that's, like, a lot. It's a lot to expect players to keep track of, and it's also a lot for the devs to, like, be balancing all the time. Balancing two different things potions can do. So they changed it a little while ago, so that you get fewer potion slots at Ascension 11, rather than having your potions all start doing different things. Anyway, I think it's a, a sensible change. And that's why my potions are now doing, like, the usual thing, but... We have minus one potion slot compared to before. This guy is, like, completely dead. This boss does not do anything if he has minus 6 strength. Well, he stands still and then he dies. Other than that, he's, uh, 
He's not very active. Pantograph. Oh yeah, we got 25 health from going into this fight. I didn't even think about that when I selected it. That's the second time tonight that I've had that interaction happen. Uh, do this first, probably. Whoops. Just pretend that was deliberate. Is this the first overexplain? It is Larry's, yeah. Okay. We do you want to feed? We also want to just play Flame Barrier every turn. Flame Barrier Plus is a very good card in this deck, especially compared to some of the other cards in this deck. Not going to point any fingers. Brutality. Uh, good stuff. All of this max HP could end up being relevant for the final fights. Every five turns we get an intangible. That's great. We have an explosive potion. Um, I think we've talked about all of these cards several times already this run. Except for Wild Strike Plus. But Wild Strike Plus is just like a one energy damage card. It's not... There's not much to say there. Actually, some of the problems we've been having in fights could be solved by Wild Strike Plus. So maybe it was worth dwelling on it a little bit more. I just think it doesn't have enough of an impact for what it is. I think our issues are largely that we don't have four energy. Even with Sneko-I, having a fourth energy would be very, very nice. And that we still have a bunch of basic strikes in the deck and basic defense. We're just drawing a lot of, a lot of these cards and they don't do very much. Nine. Da, 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 da. Okay. How is White Beast the best that we could do? The others were Calling Bell and Runic Pyramid. Not the best luck on those boss relics, unfortunately. Pyramid is pretty actively bad when you have Sneka. Yeah, if you have like... Mm, yeah, no, it's pretty bad. <laughs> pretty actively bad if you have Sneka. I was going to try to come up with some situation where it was maybe not quite as bad, but maybe there just isn't one. Maybe there just isn't one, or maybe that's okay. Would I take a Wild Strike Plus if I hadn't a Vol? I think so. I'd think harder about it. Remember to use the potion as we get another. Yeah, only if it actually does something. Maybe there's a turn earlier where I should have used the energy potion actually. It's okay to just, like, discard one of the potions. It's nice to be able to choose the potion that's the most valuable for us. And right now, energy potion's alright. The exploding potion, we should probably just go ahead and use at the end of this fight. If you take a card with headbutt while having snack eye, does the price change? Yeah, how it works is when you draw a card off the top of your draw pile into your hand, that's when the price changes. Nothing else will actually change the price of a card. So if you're like 
getting something back with Exhume, the price stays the same. If you are using Hologram on Defect to get something out of your discard pile, the price will stay the same. If you're using a Seek on Defect or a Secret Weapon or something to find something in your draw pile, the price will stay the same. Although keep in mind, these cards in my draw pile do have the randomized costs already, because I've already drawn this card once and changed the cost, so it will stay costing one until I draw it the next time, at which point it will change cost. Ooh. Then I have a spot weakness. Shouldn't my like... I feel like my strength should be going up in these fights, and it isn't. Pyromaniac, how you doing? How is your sleep? Long and lovely, you already told me. I'm glad. I'm jealous. I'm glad. And jealous. A bit jealous. Snekoi is okay in a Shiv deck. Um, Shivs, when created, will always cost zero with Snekoi. However, if for some reason you don't play them, then the next time you draw them, they might cost something else. Um... Oh, I've killed them both. Whoops. <laughs> I was trying to feed there. I have failed. Flame barrier is too strong. Oh, he came back. I Is that a situation where the order matters? I thought that I was not going to succeed. I appear to have been wrong. Strength potion does seem better. We've got a clothesline, a body slam, and a cleave. Body Slam is sort of okay with Barricade, but we're not succeeding in creating block, really. Also, especially against Time Eater, if we make 999 block, we'll just, like, win with a Rampage or something. That's fine. Uh, Clothesline, we've talked about a lot. Cleave is a very mediocre 1 energy card. Most of these, like, common attacks that just do something for 1 energy, these are attacks that I'm going to put in my deck in the first 5 floors of the run, and if they don't go in there, then they're never going in. Like, these are cards that get your deck to, uh... A passable threshold for beating Act 1 Elite fights and Act 1 Difficult Hallway fights, and then after that, they're like, if you're relying on something like Cleave after that, something's gone horribly wrong, probably. actually hitting pretty hard every turn. Especially when our hands are like this. Uh... Yep, taking 10. Got incense burner here. Um, problems. Exume hits, shockwave, disarm. Don't need to shockwave, don't need to disarm. Maybe we just flame barrier. Probably we just flame barrier. True grit, clue. Yeah, we just flame barrier. Can we kill this turn? Roads line, strike. Get, nope. With a potion, we actually could. I think I'm just gonna feed though. And then we're gonna rest twice. I think that's okay. 
Frozen core channels for us with any amount of empty orb slots. I mean, that seems pretty good. That seems pretty good. Frost orbs are quite good. Yeah, that seems pretty good. You have some very bad news. What is the bad news, the Elbion? Ivan Gnome? What is the debuff with 10? Oh, sorry. Um, It's specific to this enemy. It has an attack... Uh, a move, a move, I guess, which constricts you, and constricting causes you to take 10 damage at the end of your turn, specifically, which is a unique time to take damage in this game. Or the end of its turn? The end of your turn. Yeah, the end of your turn. Which means that, like, you'll take damage before it dies to poison, for example. Uh, in most situations, it's indistinguishable from uh, just taking 10 damage in any other way, though. Um, Heavy Blade Plus is okay. I'm going to take Heavy Blade Plus with a Strength Potion. I think it's good enough. Juggernaut's actually not that bad, but Heavy Blade Plus with a Strength Potion. Begin to fall. Let's lose a Strike. Ooh, Brutality might be worse than Strike. Eh, probably not quite. Just getting rid of those low-impact cards so we can stop drawing them over and over again. We are healing for 52. Two, putting us at 122 health. That's great. Let's do that after the store and remove another strike right now. Just keep thinning the deck down so we can draw the cards which are relevant to our strategy more often. At this store, gambling chip's great with Sneko Eye. Because uh, at the start of the combat, you have seven cards in your hand. Some of them cost three. You just discard them. Your turn one just becomes much, much, much better. So gambling chips uh pretty strong. Of course we can't afford it. Also, it's a like hallway fight sort of relic. It's not as relevant in a time meter fight, because time meter is going to go very long. I'm just gonna remove a card at the store. I think we have to think too hard about it. Let's remove a brutality. I don't want to play a brutality, I don't want to draw a brutality, I just don't want that card in my deck. Why not burning pact with snack? Is there a burning pact here? Did I miss a burning pact? Where was a burning pact? Did I take something else over a burning pact? I'm not sure where there was a burning pact. Is that where I took heavy blade? I don't remember there being a burning pact there. Okay, so I'm gonna rest, just get to full health. The deck is fine. It's capable of beating Time Eater. It's going to be a bit of a messy fight. Ooh, choose a power card and start with it in hand. Let's go Barricade. Yeah, let's start with Barricade. Is that our only power card now? Yes. And again, what is this? Hand Drill. Whenever you break an enemy's block, apply two vulnerable. What an interesting relic. Um, again, we're just going to remove one of the cards that we don't want. Strike plus, I think, is even worse than a defend. We're having some difficulties blocking recently. Alright, let's pay 23 gold for a red mask. Get one weak. How did I get brutality? I transformed into it at a question mark event. But will it not be three mana? Apparently it will. Um, at least this time. I think... I don't remember, does bottled stuff happen first? We're very bad at having stuff not cost... Three. I'm gonna use the energy pot here. This guy is threatening, this exploder. He could deal quite a lot of damage. He's not gonna kill us, obviously, because we have 124 health and he can hit for 30. He is a little bit scary. Fascinating. 
Let's hold on to feed and feed on something. I think we'll be able to uh, get to a campfire, rest, and then plus pantograph end up on full health for the boss fight. If not, we probably should have used feed right then. Snack is actually good against guys who put dazes in your deck as well. It's crazy how many like weird ways Snack Eye just is a very good relic. Would be cool if Exploder was an insta kill. Like it instantly killed the player? <laughs> That's monstrous. I don't know how I feel about that. Let's look for our Xume and get this guy Eden as well. This is an upgraded feed. So that's plus 8 HP for the fight. Steroid potion sort of nice. Ooh, corruption. Ooh, corruption. Um, Corruption's very good with Snekoi because you draw, well, way back in Act 1 I talked about Corruption. Snekoi is a relic that makes you draw more cards than you can play, and Corruption makes all of your skills cost zero. I'm not convinced that we want it for the Time Eater fight. It's like, specifically the, like, boss fight. It would help in these hallways. Let's just take it for the hallways. Sure. It's going to be insignificant enough in the time meter fight, I think, that it will be worth having just to help us through these. I ridiculed chat for going Sneko every game. Well, that was a different time. A different world. Not enough cards for corruption? We certainly have enough for, like, this fight. I guess. Boom. Suddenly we have 47 block. Boom. Boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, disarm. It just gives you so much more output. enough for corruption against time eater well we don't play it the first time we draw it but we get to play it later in the fight first time i loaded up the game when i thought the bash was terrible I played the game very differently then, and it was wrong the way that I played it. <laughs> Havoc, Twin Strike, Pommel Strike. We've more or less talked about these cards. The only one that we haven't really talked about is Pommel Strike. This is the first one of these that we've seen this run. Pommel Strike is a great card. Nice to have damage, nice to have card draw. Sort of awkward for Ironclad. There aren't that many phases of a run where you want more damage on a one cost common and you want more card draw so like it hits it hits all the phases of the run because you do want damage commons early and you do want card draw later but it's not like a card that excels at any one moment i don't think but it's okay it's 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 good almost good we're not going to take it right now because it costs between zero and three it is 5 30 a.m in steve land Apparently, according to Twitch chat. I just trusted Twitch chat on that, honestly. I didn't even look. Okay, we're about to explode when these guys, like, blow up next turn.
I wonder if the bug still exists that stops them from blowing up properly here. Yep, still exists. Be true to say I only really understood this game when I started playing Ascension 15, so I could focus on being good and not being meme. Um, well, it's a different game out of Ascension 15. Also, I don't know. I there was a long time that I didn't play the game for win rate at all. That was not my concern. I was trying to break different things in the game to like learn the limits on it. This is just how I learn games for the most part. If you upgrade a card that changes its mana cost when upgraded while you have Sneko, what happens? It changes its energy cost to uh, whatever it gets upgraded to. We were talking about that a little bit earlier, actually. 59, 41, 21. Is there some way to, like... 59, 21 is not enough. Uh... Uh, ah, uh, it doesn't work. It doesn't work this turn. Oh, pendant, sure. That's great. Pummel, Wild Strike, Iron Wave. Meh, these are all just mediocre attacks. I don't know. Pummel's, like, pretty good with strength scaling, but... Let's get rid of the steroid pot and grab a swift pot. And let's fight a time eater. I think that we want to remove our last strike. I think that's going to be the best we can do. And the way we're going to want to play this is we use True Grit to try to thin the chaff out of the deck, play Flame Barrier over and over again, and like disarm twice. And honestly, that's probably all you have to do. Um, yeah, it's pretty much all you have to do, I think. Hey, Joji. Are you... Still awake, Joji? No sleeping, huh? Hey, Dread First. Good morning. Gotta watch Nick crush some people. What's Nick up to? Is he playing, uh... Minesweeper right now? Okay, we want to armaments. We play a defend and true grit away. A corruption? Sure, let's get rid of corruption. We don't want that. Fourth game and awesome. Cool. I'm working on D&D with my stream on in the background. Oh, nice. What have you got in store for your party? You go disarm, exhume the disarm, disarm again. That will keep them locked down for a while. And while that's happening, we want to like stockpile some strength and some block. I'm just not going to play this. Uh, sure. <laughs> I'll play it. I'm not sure if any of my players are watching. Right. That's fair. That's fair. Good thinking. I did not. That did not occur to me. I'm glad that occurred to you. Let's, like, get rid of something that we don't want. What don't we want? Clothesline. Probably don't want clothesline.
Is D&D a lot of work? Um, in my experience, it's about three times as work for me to DM as it is for me to like play a new character. And playing a character who's already established is like you show up and do it. You don't really have to do any preparation almost. It's been my experience with it. So we're not always playing all of the cards in a turn because this guy gains strength as you play more cards. We don't really want him to gain a bunch of strength. If he doesn't have to. We're just trying to play True Grit. We're trying to get our deck down to something more controlled where we can recur the same valuable cards over and over again. It's a wizard. I made this. Thanks, SG West. That's incredible. Okay, we can probably start killing now. I'm on 138 health. Seems nice. It really helps that D&D is one of those things you can't get out of your head once you get into it. Yeah, absolutely. I think about my D&D game, like, all week when I'm not playing it. Absolutely love it. <laughs> hmm. Oh, he dies to Flame Barrier. This sort of poetic. Alright, good run. We ended up with 138 health. Hallway fights were significantly more difficult for us than Time Eater was in the end. Uh, yeah, this was a pretty, pretty weird run. We ended up with a Sneko deck that really struggled to deal damage early. It's very good at weakening and making things vulnerable. Probably significantly too much. Hmm. Hey, Baez, thanks for gifting us up to SG West. Agabomo show to the both of you. Much appreciated. Um, once we got corruption into the deck, I think it was, like, really easy to see how much easier that made hallway fights. I think this was a good run to showcase just how strong corruption can be, even though it only showed up, like, so late in the run that it was sort of already done. Uh, we saw Barricade being okay. We saw, like, a, a deck that sort of scaled up in strength and then played Heavy Blade. I don't know. It was a weird deck. It was a weird deck. The strongest two cards in the deck are probably, like, well, these are probably the strongest cards in the deck. And they didn't show up until the run was basically already over. Oh, Feed got us to 141 health. So, yeah, Feed does some pretty ridiculous things. Um, definitely made it a lot safer for us to get through Act 3, despite our deck being a little bit... Awkward. We scored 17-13. Which is not bad. Not bad at all. I play 5th uh, edition D&D. Not really.